Hi, I'm Jo. Uh, I'm a scientist at the Centre for Virus Research in the University of Glasgow. And during my PhD, I was really interested in looking at virus-virus interactions. So we know that uh, loads of respiratory viruses co-circulate within the population and they use our respiratory tract as um, an ecological niche. So they come in, they infect cells, and then they move on and this is how they survive. So we know that there's a lot of respiratory viruses about and there's a high chance that we could become co-infected with more than one virus. So um, most studies have um, only looked at viruses in isolation. So what we were really interested in doing was understanding how viruses, when they co-infect the same person, how they can interact with one another. We were looking at the most basic level um, of this is how two viruses can infect the same cell. And we did this by looking at two clinically important viruses, influenza A virus and respiratory syncytial virus. And we used lab adapted strains of these viruses so they were very safe to work with. So what we did was uh, we used cells that came from human lungs and we set up a tightly controlled system where we could infect these cells with both viruses at the same time. And then we used uh, lots of different imaging techniques to understand how the viruses interacted and uh, what were the kind of consequences of this. And what we found was that the two viruses could infect the same cell and start producing uh, more copies of viruses, but a subset of these copies of viruses were actually forming these viral hybrids. So they contained genomes and structural components from both viruses. So we found that they have these interesting functional consequences because they can incorporate the components from both viruses. That means that the um, biological properties can change. So for example, we found that um, flu can use the proteins from um, the RSV virus to allow it to gain entry to cells that don't have the right receptor for flu. Um, so in doing this, it kind of um, plays a sort of Trojan horse role to get into the cell. Um, and we also found that uh, using a similar mechanism, flu can um, evade uh, antibodies, which are a really important component of the immune system, to um, escape detection and enter cells. So the reason that this research is so important is because we didn't know that these um, viruses had these properties and they could fuse to um, form essentially what is a new type of um, pathogen. And this um, could be happening in a co-infected individual every time that they're infected by both viruses we could be seeing these hybrid particles being formed without realizing. So this could have um, consequences for how um, the viruses travel around the respiratory tract, which might have implications on um, the way that disease progresses. However, at this stage, we don't know um, whether this does happen in, within a person as what we've done so far has just been in a very tightly controlled laboratory setting using cell culture. Um, so the next steps are to understand um, how likely this would be to occur within the natural setting of an infection and um, what properties make a virus more likely to engage in becoming a hybrid particle. We know that they happen in cell culture and in doing that we've proven that it's um, biologically feasible for these hybrids to be forming. This means they could be forming in a person, but at this stage we don't know how frequently that could be occurring, and we don't know um, whether this would impact the clinical severity. So that's something that we'll need to explore more. The first thing that we want to do is to understand um, what properties, what sort of shared traits or properties make a virus more likely to become a hybrid. So um, the way to do that is kind of to characterize panels of related viruses and to understand which combinations um, are compatible together because there will be certain properties which make a virus able to engage in hybrids or not able. 